hello hello <laughs> as you may notice i'm not in my typical filming location we have just had family over my crafting room where i typically film is still full with a inflatable bed so i'm not gonna film there today so today's video is the september prompt challenge and the prompt for september is pumpkin spice so for pumpkin spice, think anything in terms of literally, or in terms of the color, in terms of pumpkin, in terms of the season, kind of anything that comes to mind for you. I'll include everything that you guys did suggest here. And so I picked out pumpkin spice because it was kind of the thing that encompassed everything the most. You guys seem to be really on theme with fall, but I didn't want to do two seasons in a row, especially because last month, so August prompt was summer. And with that said, here are you guys' submissions for August. Um, you guys totally killed it. There was a ton of variety and I'm super excited to see what you guys are gonna do for this month. So for me, for this month, I have decided to do little pumpkin earrings. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So in terms of material, I will be using some embroidery thread. You can totally use lace weight yarn, but I just find embroidery thread is a little bit cheaper and you get less, which is totally fine for what we're doing now. I will also be using a 1.4 millimeter hook, as well as some earring stuffs uh, that I just got off of Amazon for really cheap. So these are just like little O-rings, I suppose, so that I can attach my little pumpkins to these earrings. And I do have earring backings just in case. And of course, I will be using some stitch markers and a sewing needle. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's get started. So I'm going to start with the orange color and I'm going to make a slip knot. Now, if you've never crocheted this tiny before, don't worry. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Now here I did a chain two and I'm going to be single crocheting six in the second chain from my hook. Now, this is because I absolutely just despise magic rings. But if you are comfortable with a magic ring and you prefer that, then single crochet six into a magic ring. So here's my first single crochet. And so that I can remember that, I will use a stitch marker. This one is super duper cute. And it is from Ocean Loops. I will put their Instagram below. Also, please excuse this below my nail. We had a black ink spill the other day when my family was over. Um, and that's just little remnants of that. So sorry about that. I promise I'm super clean. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six single crochet. So now I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and that is my very first round. So next I'm going to single crochet increase in each stitch from the previous round, which means that at the end of this round, I will have 12 stitches in total. And an increase just means placing two of the same stitch, in this case, single crochet in the same stitch. And there you go, the last stitch of the row. Place my one and two. And now I have 12 single crochets all the way around. So it's up to you how big you want your little pumpkins to be. I'm gonna go and do one more round in this flat circle. So it's going to be one single crochet, single crochet increase all the way around, which will give me a total of 18 stitches around. But if you guys like this size and you want it to be super tiny, just move on to the next step. And obviously if you wanna go bigger, then you'll keep going with a flat circle pattern. So if my next row is one and then increase, the row after that would be two and then increase and each round goes up by six. So I'll start my next one. So I'm going with one single crochet and increase in the next stitch. All right, and now that I'm looking at this, here's the size compared to my thumbnail. So it's still pretty tiny. Uh, and I think I am gonna go ahead and add one more row. So this time it's gonna be two single crochet, single crochet increase all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. And perfect, there you go. So it's about the sizes of, I don't know, two thumbnails. <laughs> ah! Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to be single crocheting around for the next five rounds. 
So I have 24 in this row and depending on where you decided to stop for your pumpkin size, um, just make sure that you always have the same number of stitches as your last round. So I have 24. So I'm gonna be single crocheting around for five rounds, making sure that I have 24 stitches in each round every single time. Alrighty, so here it is after my five rows and you can see it's making like this little kind of cup <laughs> shape. And so now we're gonna do the reverse of what we just did for the increases with decreases. So my last row was two single crochet, single crochet increase, which means that for this row, I'm going to do two single crochet and then single crochet two together. And so now it's gonna be minus six per row. So here's my first stitch. Let me just place my stitch marker and then I'll single crochet two together by placing my hook through the stitch, pulling through, placing my hook through the next stitch, pulling through, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. And now I'm gonna do that again. So two single crochets, one, two, crochet two together, pull through, pull through, pull through all three. I'm gonna do that all the way around and I will be left with 18 stitches. And here you go. So then the next one will be one single crochet, single crochet two together around, and that will give us 12 stitches when all said and done. So here's my one and single crochet two together. There you go, now I'm left with 12 stitches around. Now the next thing that you're gonna go do here is grab either some yarn ends or some stuffing, and we are going to stuff this. <laughs> here you go, this looks super silly, but now we are going to single crochet two together all the way around until you have six stitches left. And this should leave you with kind of this opening. If you want to, you can put a couple more single crochet two together to really close the gap at the top. And then what you're gonna do is you you are going to tie off this yarn, but you're gonna leave a very, very long end because we're gonna use this not only to sew, but also to shape the pumpkin. About this much yarn. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just make sure that I sew this by just kind of going like back and forth here. And don't worry, this middle part will get kind of squashed. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if there's huge kind of gaps at the top. And now my next thing that I'm gonna do is go right through the center and straight through to the other side like this. And I'm gonna pull and it's gonna create a little bit of a divot, which I'm going to do the same thing again. Go back through to the other side and pull. And so now we've kind of washed the pumpkin. Now we're gonna make sections with it. So since you've gone right through to the top, you're gonna grab your yarn, you're gonna go to the other side, and we're gonna go back up straight through the middle of the opposite side. And you're gonna pull tight, and this is gonna create one little pumpkin section. And then you're gonna keep repeating this over and over. So until you have as many sections of the pumpkin as you'd like, look at how cute this is. So the bottom is obviously a lot prettier than the top and that's okay because we're gonna add some little embellishments on the top. So when you're satisfied with the shape of your pumpkin, what you're gonna do is grab this strand here and just sew it through. Another option, if you're much cooler than me, you can always just grab this little end once you've sewed it and secured it pull it through and then if you wanna add like beads and stuff to the bottom, you sure can. I don't have beads so I will not do that, but you know, just throwing it out there. Next will be the stem. So I'm grabbing my brown and I'm going to place a slip knot and we're gonna connect this at the top of, so you can kind of put your hook through the top like so. And it doesn't really matter where, but just make sure it's kind of centered. This is your pumpkin. You can do whatever your heart desires. And pull that yarn through and slip stitch, which I'm going to do off camera because this hook is tiny. This yarn is tiny. Oh no! 
oh, never mind. Look, I got it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I'm going crazy. Okay. From here, you are going to chain five, four. Ooh, actually four looks much better now that I'm here. So I lied to you, chain four. <laughs> and then starting in the second chain from your hook, you are gonna be placing single crochets. So you'll be ending up with three single crochets in this stem. And I'm gonna do that off camera, guys, because this is so tiny and so hard to do. There, so you can see, it's really hard to see, my three single crochets here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip stitch through this same pumpkin again. And again, I'm gonna do that one off camera because it is just so hard, but I'm just gonna pretty much insert my hook through this middle area here, pull through to do a slip stitch, and that'll secure my stem in place. After that, you can tie off grab both these ends and I am going to just make a knot with these two to make sure that it's nice and secure. And there you go. And now I'm going to weave in these two ends. To weave in guys, all I did was grab my ends and I pulled them all the way through the pumpkin um, so that this stands up like so. And once it's here, I'm just gonna snip it off at the bottom. Off camera, I can either stuff it back in or if you wanna leave this little brown at the bottom like so, it kind of looks like the bottom side of a pumpkin. So we're gonna make a little intricate detail. So it's gonna be the leaf here. So again, start with your little snip, ooh, slip knot. And here we are going to chain five. Next, starting in the second chain from hook, We'll place a single crochet, followed by a half double crochet in the next stitch, then we'll be placing another half double crochet in the following one and a single crochet in the last. Just like that. And now you're gonna tie this off. All right, now you're gonna use your needle. I've only put one side through so that I can thread this right beside where my stem is on my pumpkin. So here I'm gonna grab my pumpkin, probably insert my leaf right about here. Just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is grab the other side and I'm gonna tie these two here into a knot. Ta-da! <laughs> and now, same as what I did with the stem, I'm gonna sew these two ends in down through the pumpkin. Okay, here's the more tedious part. So I've decided to put my little O-ring through the very, very top of my stem so my little pumpkin will hang from my stem. Because now I'm going to grab this little earring piece, put it right through my O-ring, and voila! Isn't that just so cute and honestly so easy? Like it just does not take too much time. And if you wanted to, you could put your O-ring on the actual pumpkin instead if you don't want it to hang from the stem. I just think it's super cute from the stem like this. And needless to say, you're gonna wanna make another one for the other side, but just look how cute and adorable. <laughs> And there you go guys, that's it. Super quick and super duper easy. Honestly, probably took me only like 15 minutes tops per little pumpkin. So uh, let me know if you guys make it. Tag me on Instagram at high level bandanas. And I cannot wait to see your September prompt. If you do decide to join in, make sure you hashtag HLB monthly and tag at high level bandanas. And I will be able to feature you in next month's video. Also on my Instagram, because I did make an Instagram post with all of you guys' submissions. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.